sometimes when Pop-Pop's diligent and he's doing his work in the back of class, I like to just bother him because are you doing a good job? Yes. How do I make your life easier? Say it one more time. How do I make your life easier? Good for chunks if you want to say be visible. Uh, Alright, be invisible. No, be visible. Be oh, visible. be visible. <laughs> Question, I don't know, I, I always do this when I'm starting a video. I don't really know, I just noticed that I do that. A question that I get a lot, especially on live feeds on Sunday nights. So if you don't know, we do a live feed. We, my wife and I do a live feed every Sunday night, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. One of the questions I get asked the most is about student teaching. So I have two other videos about student teaching, but I thought I would just kind of like reintroduce some ideas. So if you're about to go into student teaching or if you've just started student teaching, here are, I don't know any tip, nine, nine, Nine-ish tips on what you should do if you just start student teaching. Before I jump into my first tip, real quick, um, a quick snapshot of what it looked like when I started student teaching. I started student teaching, I did it at Winslow Township High School in New Jersey, and I don't know why I tell everyone that, but I, I do. Because I kind of liked the idea of being there, because it was a good mix of like kids that were like sort of lower on, or not sort of like kids that were lower on the socioeconomic scale, kids that were higher up. It was a real good mix of, of students. So I felt like I got a fuller experience while I was there. And it helped me to kind of see like where I wanted to teach after that. And it did, it did inform that decision on, on some level. Teaching where I taught, I taught with a gentleman named Mr. Z. Mr. Z was a teacher there and he was fantastic. I had had my practicum with him the trimester or semester before. He called the school and asked if my, my university and asked if I would be able to student teach with him. And that was awesome. So we met up the summer before. He gave me all the stuff that we would be talking about, all the stories that we'd be reading, all the books that we'd be reading, so I could kind of dive into that. And then he and I lesson planned over the summer. So I was a part of student teaching long before I ever stepped foot into the classroom. I helped him set up his room. I helped him clean. I helped him get ready. I was meeting students in the summer. And so that was really great. But I realized that my situation wasn't the same as everyone else's. So I'm going to draw from that experience, but by no means is anyone's experience the same or is their cooperating teacher the same or the students they teach the same or anything like that. So, um, I, but I still think these nine ideas will help you no matter where you are or who you're teaching with or what your situation is. So, so here we go. Numero uno. How do I make your life easier? Somebody told me this somewhere along the way and it was when they started student teaching, they went in and they said, the one question they had for the cooperating teacher was, how do I make your life easier? And I really like that. So what that's doing is it is sort of like asking for the invitation into the game of teaching. So what is that teacher doing? Are you gonna help grade? Are you gonna greet students? Are you gonna help do the you know work after school or clean the board? Or what are you involved in in class that is gonna put you in a driver's seat faster than normal. So what you don't wanna do is start there and you're sitting in the back, you're sitting on your phone, you're sitting quietly to the side. You wanna have some role, whether that's taking attendance, inputting attendance, giving out trans passes, handing out, like taking lunch count or whatever it is that you're doing, you have some role immediately. So how do I make your life easier? I think it's just a really great idea and, and way like a, like a soft in if that teacher is reluctant to give up control. Because to be honest with you, look, as a, as a teacher, I would be reluctant to give up control because there's a lot at hand. There's a lot to lose. And so you want to hand over what you're doing um, to someone that you can trust, someone that's looking to do the work. And I think just asking that question shows that you are excited and willing to do the work. Number two. All right, be invisible. No, be visible. Be oh, visible. be visible. <laughs> yeah. All right. Be visible. Be available. Be available. Be real. Be real. Visible. visible. Be available. Be real. All right. I got it. Go. All right. Be invisible. Be <laughs> available. Available. 
and be real. All right, all right, one more time, one more time. Go. All right, be visible, be available, be real. Got it. What my man was trying to say there was be real, be visible, and oh, sh I messed it up too. Be real, be available, and be visible. And what that means is one, um, be visible. Be in spaces where students can see you. Kids will talk to you more if they feel like they can connect with you. So what that means is, are your students seeing you in the hallway, after school, before school, on the football field, at lunch? Like where are they seeing you more and more often? Because the more often they see you, the more they're gonna feel comfortable coming to you for help in life, in school, in whatever else. And that's what you need. You need to build relationships with your students. And the first way you do that is by being visible. If you are that teacher that everyone goes, who's that? I don't even know who that is. And you've been at your school for a few weeks, then that's not a good thing. So don't hide, be just out and about. You don't even have to necessarily talk to anyone. You're just saying what's up or you're shaking hands or you're just being around where other people are. So you become someone that everyone feels comfortable with. So that was being visible, I think. Being available means making yourself available to students. Putting time aside to help students after school, to talk to kids after school, whether it's about comic books or TV or homework or whatever it is, you're blocking out time so that you are not doing something else so you can give your full undivided attention to students. What you don't wanna do is sit there grading something while students are trying to talk to you. It's, um, it's off-putting and it makes it feel like you're not really giving them all the attention they deserve or all the attention that they need. And so you're sending this non-verbal cue that you don't really care. Stop what you're doing and just listen. That always makes me think of that song, Stop What You're Doing, because I'm about to ruin the rhythm and the style of the art, never mind. And being real is just being honest about who you are and what you're about with students. So if kids ask questions about your life, if they ask where you went to school, if they asked if you liked high school, if they asked what kind of student you were, if you liked fifth grade, being honest with kids about who you are and what you're about. Kids already have some kind of false idea of who you are, right? Like they think that you just go home and grade papers all the time or you, you know, what are you doing at the food store? And sweatpants, it's awkward. You know, but if I'm real with my kids, I keep it real all the time about who I am, about what I expect from them, and about why we're doing what we're doing. So when kids go, why do I have to do this? This is so dumb. Why are we wasting our time on this? Why does it matter if I have good grammar or if I punctuate my sentences? It's knowing whatever your subject matter, 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 matter is that you are being real about the why or about who you are. And so I think that matters a lot. The realer we can be with our students, then the realer we can hope that they'll be with us. Number three. Try yeah. stuff. Wait, go do it again. Right. Try stuff. What's the worst that could happen? You said that with a lot of excitement. Try stuff. What's the worst thing that's gonna happen? You will not catch on fire. If you try something and it doesn't work out, you won't catch on fire, unless you're using Bunsen burners or something like that, or some sort of explosive, which is prohibited in school anyway. So. So I go back to it, you won't catch on fire. I think when we're starting out, there is this sense that we get where we need to play it safe. And I think that is the wrong idea. I want you to think of it like this. If you started dating someone and you were being fake, you were pretending to be something that you weren't, how's that gonna work out for you? Not very good is my guess, right? You need to be honest about who you are, what you like, what you dislike, what you're willing to take, what you're willing not to take. So if someone is chewing their nails at the dinner table and you don't really like that, guess what? They're gonna keep doing that for the rest of your life. Tell you, tell them, hey man, not real into chewing your nails at the dinner table or really chewing your nails at all. So if you could just stop that, it would be great. That metaphor was a little bit weird, but what I'm going for here is don't be afraid to try stuff in class. And don't be afraid when you try something new, weird, awesome, strange, cool, that the students may not get down with it. That could happen for two reasons, three reasons. One, maybe it was a terrible idea and it doesn't work and no one wants to do it. That's a very real possibility. Roll with it, right? Like let your life be a series of failures in which sometimes you find successes and sometimes you don't and learn from them. Two, the trust isn't there yet. Building relationships, being real with students and being visible and being available will build that trust. Once that trust is built, then kids are gonna be more willing to get down with you, right? It's like if you go to a party and everyone's dancing, if you don't know anyone there, you might not wanna be the first one to jump out on the dance floor. But if you know everybody there, you feel comfortable, and even though you dance like Elaine from Seinfeld, you can still feel safe in that space 
to do the weird thing that's being asked of you. And the third reason that they might not get down with what you're doing is, look, I, I can't say this enough or say it loud enough. School largely sucks. Most students have had schooling for the last however many years since you've gotten there. That has not been fun, and especially if you're teaching middle school or high school, right? Like the love of school kind of wanes after a certain grade or a certain age. And now you are more worried about being cool. You're worried about looking a fool in front of your friends. And so if you're dealing with a whole bunch of years of something not going so well, then now you get to this space, you are like, why are we doing this? This seems dumb. Why am I wasting my time with this? And that is an issue that you, again, can speak to why you're doing it, why it's important. Telling kids, look, man, I know school sucks and I'm just trying to make it better. Can you go with me on this? And once you build those relationships, those kids will do anything that you want, largely. I mean, you're gonna still have students that are like still gonna sleep or tell you that it's dumb or they don't care, but that's about them. It's not so much about you. If you're winning the majority of the class over and there are outlier students, that's a whole nother situation. It's a whole nother class. It's a whole nother video for me to make rather, but what you're trying to do is win over the majority of the class. And so keep doing, you will not catch on fire. Number something, I forget what number we're on, but anyway, the point here is that's is why I teach English and not math. Your students are a throwaway experience. No, your students aren't a throwaway experience. <laughs> your students aren't a throwaway experience. Remember that these students that you're teaching now are not some sort of throwaway, right? Although you're trying stuff, and you can go full tilt and try and make yourself look like a fool and see how things work. These relationships are still important. These kids are still important. And the reason I say this is I've seen folks that have come to my room that have tried to be a part of my class and we're sort of dismissive of kids or talked trash behind their backs or like, you know, we're, it was like a negative situation. I still keep up with kids that I taught years ago. Like when I was still student teaching, when my hair was actually brown or black or whatever color it used to be. I don't remember at this point. I still keep up with them, whether it's on social media or whether it's on, or whether it's in person, like we'll go to a bar or something like that, or go out to dinner or just meet up for some reason. That is something that still happens because these are relationships that will carry on forever. So make sure that those students can still get in contact with you and treat them like, you know, these are your actual students. They're not just an experiment. So that's something worth keeping in mind. Number five. Observe all the classes. All the classes. All the classes. When you're student teaching, it is really easy to like stay in the room that you're in or stay involved in just the students that you're involved with, right? Because you're trying to build those relationships. Time is of the essence. You're only there for a few weeks or a few months. So you want to make the most of that. But I would say if you have a prep, if you can get out of teaching a class one day, it's really important to observe all types of classes. So from AP to honors to, you know, the lower level courses um, to like a, like a CP class, or if there's some sort of like um, small group room, you want to get in as many spaces as you can. And you want to see as many different types of teachers teach as you can, because not everyone is teaching the same, right? Like we want to see as many different types of teachers as we can. And that's going to do two things. One, it's going to give you great ideas that you can use in your own class. Don't be afraid to borrow ideas. This is not like you don't get extra credit for coming up with your own stuff. No one's going to know that you took an idea from one teacher and using it in your class. And that's, uh, I think it's something wonderful. Like if you watch something from my videos, I don't expect that you're not using it in your own class if it helps you. So keep that in mind. The second thing you want to do is see maybe how you don't want to teach. Maybe you're in someone's room that is really apathetic, someone that doesn't get along with the students, someone that's temper flares up really quickly. And some of those things are going to be things that you see in yourself. So when I started teaching, my temper didn't flare up, but I definitely like could feel it in my body, even though I didn't necessarily show it. Like I never snapped and freaked out on my class but it felt like my blood was boiling. It felt like my head was going to explode. It felt like I was so mad or so nervous or so whatever that I could not even focus on what was happening in class. And when you see someone else going through that, it's interesting to be able to step back and see that in someone else and then kind of process that and think, well, what would I do if I was in that situation? So when you're in those classes, that's what you should be thinking about. What could I borrow? What do I not want to borrow? And how would I act if I was in a given situation? So that's why I think it's important to observe 
all types of classes. Even, real quick, now that I think of it, even grades that you're not teaching, it will give you an insight and a more fuller experience while you're student teaching than you would have otherwise. Number six. Take care of yourself. Say it like you mean it, Kev. <laughs> like how, how, how? Like, take you know. care of yourself. All right, like your Tupac. Take care of yourself. Good. Self care. Care, care, care. Self care is really important. Like, look, it is a job where the work is never done. And the only people that really know that are teachers. People that are not teachers do not know this. And I thought it was funny when my wife used to ask me when I was lesson planning or working on the weekends, she would always say like, hey, are you done yet? And it's like, dude, I'm never done. Like I'm literally working forever. So what is there that you can do to, to, to make yourself work better? Remember, if, and this is my friend Elise told me this, if the car doesn't have gas, no one's going anywhere. And that's really important to keep in mind. How are you filling yourself up? Because although you feel like you can run the marathon as a sprint, you're going to run out of gas and you're going to be worse off for it. So whether that's watching Netflix, whether it's hanging out with your friends, whether it's going to a bar, going out to dinner with friends. And if you're student teaching, maybe you don't have any money. I certainly didn't have any money because I couldn't work and student teach at the same time because it's too much work. So it was making sure that I was like, taking time out where I was trying to physically remove myself from actually doing work and then just hanging out with my wife, just hanging out with my friends, having people over and just chilling together. That is gonna reset you. And that reset, right, this is really important. That reset of doing seemingly nothing, which you will feel guilty about doing, is actually giving you space to like clear your head, to come up with new ideas, and to take a step back from your normal routine. When we're all up in it all the time, you forget that there's like more to life, that there's other stuff going on. And when you step back, you always get a wider view of what's going on. But when you're up in the mix, it's harder to see. That's why as sports fans, we're always yelling at the TV or screaming at the quarterback or the wide receiver because they are far, like we can see the whole game, the whole field and know what's going on. And they're all up in the mix and it makes it harder to understand that. So self-care, just trust me to do something kind for yourself, whether that's getting yourself a cup of coffee with a friend or whatever else it is that you do. It is super important. Number seven, dress like a pro. Dress like a pro. And that is uh, pretty much, I, I, what else can I say about it? Don't, don't show up looking like a slob. Take care of yourself. And it doesn't have to be like super bougie or nice, but I think when you look good, you feel good. And I think that that's important as I'm standing here in a polo shirt, because it's Friday and I'm allowed to wear a polo shirt. And I was getting a little hot in my sweater after school. The gentleman that I student taught with wore a suit and tie every single day, never did a dress down. And I think it worked for him. And so I think that you don't necessarily have to take it there, but just being mindful of what you're wearing is even if your school is super casual, I just think it puts off an, uh, a sense that you are taking this and it's important and you care about yourself. So, you know, brush those hairs and fix that tie. And I, I'd go full Don Draper if, if, if I had the opportunity, but. I think, I think that's that's all I have to say about that. I made a whole video about this where I did like my outfits and it was funny. And well, you can watch it here if you want. Back to school lookbook, take one, action. <laughs>you need to block that. I've seen it happen too many times to teachers that come in and it was like, Mr. Smith, were you at a bar last weekend? Get drunk? And it's like, bro, super awkward, block that stuff. Or keep it clean, right? So if your Instagram's super clean or I have a teacher Instagram, so my Instagram, Real Rap with Reynolds, any of my students can go on there and I don't care because I'm mindful of what I'm 
putting out there. But if you don't want students to have access to your private life, to your kids, to your snuggles that you do with your dog, to your date that you have with your husband or your boyfriend, or your girlfriend or whatever, then make sure you're just blocking that. It's just something that you can forget. Sometimes, depending on what's on there, you're literally a screenshot away from trouble. So just be mindful of that and lock that thing down. Real quick caveat to that, people always ask me, do I let students follow me on social media? Um, I do, but it's because my, my account is public so students can follow me. I do not follow students until they've graduated. And that's just a personal choice. Your school is going to be different. Your, you know, the rules at your school are going to be different. And, you know, I don't know what your students are about, but I don't follow students because I don't want to see anything that is going to put me in a weird space. So, and kids don't think all the time. So I just don't do that until they graduate. And then I'll check your stuff out. And then I, if you want me to follow you, I'll follow you. And that's just a good way to keep up with students also. So that's, that's how I handle that. Number nine, my last point is be early. Wait, just oh, go. Be early, stay late. All right, say it again. Be early or stay late. Oh, damn it. I didn't hit record. Oh, Do it one more time. Be early and stay late. Look, I mean, showing up early and staying late is super important. It shows that you care. It shows that you want to be there. I was at school at as early as I could get there. I think I got there at 6 a.m., right? And, and everyone's going to be different, right? Like maybe that's not your jam. Maybe you're a late person and not an early person, but I think not showing up at the bell, showing up early does a couple of things. One, it shows that you want to be there. Two, it's going to give you a um, time in the room where there's not a million things going on. Because as soon as students walk in the door, teachers will tell you that the time you thought was yours is no longer yours. They don't care that you have stuff to do. They want to tell you about what happened this morning or that they ran out of cereal or what happened on their show last night or whatever they want to talk about. You want to make sure you have time to just be in your room alone. That way you can set things up. If you have stations that day, if you're doing an experiment, if you're doing something fun, you can set that up, put a little bit of music on, and then just sit there in the room and take it in. Like envision yourself actually going through the activity. The other thing you want to do is make sure you're staying late. That gives you time to just hang out with kids. Like it's after school. School was done an hour ago. It's a Friday night. And there's still six kids just hanging out in the hallway. There's another 12 kids hanging out in the classroom across the hall from me. Like if I had my door open now and if kids knew that I was not recording, I'd have 10 kids because I had four kids cleaning their shoes back here for some reason and playing with a balloon in my room. True story. Here's a shot of it. Balloon. Shane, balloon. It's Friday afternoon right, and everyone's free to go. Uh, Later, Gant. But instead, we're staying in school playing Don't Touch the Ground. Oh, Shane ruined it. So, I mean, that happens. But staying late is gonna give you the in with students that you don't always have time for during the day. And I like to leave my room completely ready for tomorrow. I don't wanna come in in the morning and wash my board. I don't wanna come in in the morning and clear off all the tests on my desk or rearrange desks. I wanna walk in to something that's neat and tidy and ready to go instead of getting it ready in the morning. I, I don't want I don't want to deal with all that stuff. Look, this is by no means a comprehensive list. Like there are things on here that I didn't talk about that I didn't get to. But I think these nine tips will really put you in a good space. And you have to figure some of this out for yourself, like how this is going to fit into your student teaching and how it's going to fit into your ability to be there. And even if you're just a first year teacher, I think that all this stuff applies. And even if you're a 30 year teacher, sometimes we need a reminder. I have a quick ask for you in the comment section below. What are some other things that you think are useful? Like if you were first year teacher or student teacher and you're trying to figure out some of the do's and don'ts of the, of the world of education, what would you say? And look, if this isn't enough, gang, every Sunday night, like I said, on YouTube at 5 p.m. I have Eastern time. There's a live feed that I do. I'll answer any of your questions that you show up with there on. Um, there's also our Facebook group, Real Rap with Reynolds uh, Teacher Talk, Real Rap with Reynolds Teacher Talk, something like that. It's called on Facebook. My book is coming out at the end of March, beginning of April, hoping the end of March, called Teacher Class Off, The Real Rap Guide to Teaching. And so if your school's interested in doing a book study or something along those lines, you can contact me. I'll tell you how you can make that happen. And there's also mentoring. So if you really feel like you need to deep dive and have some one-on-one -on -one help, some mentoring with that, you can go right to my website, realrapwithreynolds.com. You can find all the information there, or you can just email me and I'll pick you up with the link and all that stuff. So that's it, gang. I'm gonna leave you with a clip of me walking around my class today, sprinkling glitter on kids. I had some confetti in a bag, not really sure why, just have random stuff in my room. 
and the kids were doing a really good job taking their tests and they were trying hard. So I decided to sprinkle some confetti on their desks and make it magical. That's it, everybody. Peace.